Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are some romance books I think are worth the hype. So I went online, I went on Goodreads, Amazon, like a bunch of other different lists and I picked out some popular romance books that I have read that I think are worth the hype, that are worth the number of ratings that they have and the fantastic ratings that they have. I don't really have an order to this, I just have a stack of them, um, but these are 10 romances that I think are personally worth the hype and think people should pick up. Now granted, these are my opinions. So I do know some of my friends, some people who don't like these books, you know what, that's okay. But if you're wanting to pick them up and you're wanting to pick up something like popular maybe, I feel like these are pretty good. First one that I have is Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. I feel like this one is such a staple in the romance book community. Like if you haven't read this one yet, you need to. It is like a great read. Like I actually had so much fun reading this. This is an age gap romance between our two main characters. Their names are Jordan and Pike, by the way. So Jordan and Pike actually meet at a movie theater on her birthday. Um, her boyfriend kind of stands her up on her birthday. So she's like, I'm just gonna go to the movies by myself. And she ends up bumping into Pike and they really connect over movies and film and stuff like that. It's a great conversation. And they kind of have a little bit of butterflies, both of them afterward, but like she's in a relationship. So she's like, never gonna happen. And then a few days later, her boyfriend basically tells her, we have to move in with my dad because we can't afford rent. Like we're getting kicked out. And so the only place they have to live is his dad's house. When she shows up to her boyfriend's dad's house, it's none other than she met at the movie theater. So this is a romance between Jordan and Pike. So her boyfriend's dad. But don't worry, like if you're worried about cheating and stuff, the boyfriend is scum, okay? I don't mind cheating if the significant other you're cheating on is scum of the earth, which he is. So it's fine. <laughs> I didn't read this one for the longest time because it was so hyped, but I'm really glad that I did. It's a really good book. I really loved both of these characters. Jordan is very mature for her age and Pike is so stinking hot. Like through the page, you can literally picture him and make he makes you melt. Okay, next I have Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This is one of my favorite like romance books that really got me into the romance genre. This is the romance between Brie and Archer. Brie ends up moving to a small town and bumping into the town recluse Archer in the parking lot of a grocery store. He's bearded, he doesn't speak a word to her, and he's kind of gruff and grumpy when they bump into each other. But that meeting has her kind of intrigued about him and the townsfolk kind of whisper about him and are wondering why she even wants to get to know him. Like, they think he's weird. But then one day she's, I think, walking her dog, I want to say, and the dog runs off and she goes to follow and the dog shows up in Archer's backyard. <laughs> Things kind of start from there. Archer is not able to speak. He was injured in a car accident and his vocal cords were severed. He's not able to speak. So he communicates through sign language, but no one he knows communicates via sign language, but our heroine's dad is deaf. So she actually does know signs. So they're able to communicate. And Archer is so in shock that there's someone he is able to communicate with. He feels like relief. He's like, there's finally someone I can communicate with. And that kind of sparks their romance. Archer has a little bit of a more naive and innocent side to him because he is a recluse and he keeps to himself in his house basically. So he doesn't know a lot about the world or about other people. But I did love Brie like showing him the world and everything like that. So this is a great, like good, sweet contemporary romance. One of my favorites of all time is Gail Life, Chloe Brown. This whole series could be on this list. This series is very hyped, but this one, like holds something in my heart. I love it. I know it's not everyone's favorite. Everyone loves book number two. I love book number two as well. Don't get me wrong. Like all the books in the series got five stars, but this one, as you can see by all the tabbies, it like, it means so much to me. This was like, I think the first book that I read with chronic illness representation. And I remember just like sobbing my eyes out. Cause I haven't, I hadn't before this point related to a book more in my life. Let's get to the summary though. So this one is about Chloe and Redford. So Chloe, at the beginning of this book, almost gets hit by a car and her life kind of flashes before her eyes and she thinks about everything she has not done with her life. She still lives at home with her parents. She lives a very sheltered life, scared of the world. But after that experience, she's like, okay, I need to get a life list. I need to get a life. Let's make a list. Kind of like a bucket list of all the things I need to do. Like one is like, run on the back of a motorcycle, get my own place, like a bunch of things, okay? So she ends up moving out of her parents' house and into an apartment and she meets the superintendent of the building, Redford, and they don't really get off on the right foot. It's very much like bickering animosity to lovers. Long story short, the two decide to help each other out despite their differences. Redford makes um, art, like he's an artist, he paints and sells his artwork online, but it's not really 
like doing well. Chloe is actually a web designer, like she creates websites. And so she's gonna help him create a better website for selling his artwork. If he will help her complete her get a life list. And obviously through that, they fall for each other, okay? I will say this book has like one of like top 10 most memorable hmm scenes in my head. And um, that's cause it's in public. So I think about those scenes all the time, but I love this one. The chronic illness representation is also fantastic. Uh, Chloe has fibromyalgia, which is a sister condition to my own. And so like, I just remember one of these scenes where she's sitting in her shower chair, just like breaking down. And I'm like, you have no idea how many times I've been there sitting in a shower chair, in a shower, breaking down. So I, I love her. I love Talia for writing her. A book that was on a lot of popular lists is this little historical. This is The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. This is the first book in her Girl Meets Duke series. This one is hyped for a reason. Okay, if you have not read historical romances yet and you want to, you have to start with this book. This one is about Ash and Emma. Ash is a duke, but he was off at war and he got injured while in battle and he comes back home to his fiance like covered in scars, scar tissue because of what happened to him. He got injured, obviously. She is revolted and is like, I'm not gonna marry you, ditches him and runs away. Then Emma shows up at Ash's doorstep. She's actually <laughs> the dressmaker for the wedding. She has made this beautiful, elegant wedding dress, but no one has come to buy it. She spent so much of her own money to make this to like get paid for it so she still has not been paid for making this beautiful wedding dress and she's like okay i know the wedding's still not on i know the wedding's not on but i need the money like i spent so much money making this dress it, like someone needs to pay me so she walks up to the duke of ashbury's house and um in the wedding dress and is like he he has to pay me if i walk up in this wedding dress shows up at his doorstep in the wedding dress and ash takes one look at her and is like you'll do, let's get married, I need an heir. <laughs> so this like grumpy, scarred Duke like falls for this sweet little dressmaker. It's really cute, like they have a bunch of rules for them getting married because they both don't wanna like fall in love with each other. But Emma just like softens him every single day and it is so cute. It's really good, the whole series is great. We're still waiting on the last book. Come on, Tessa, bring the last book to us. An older one that I think is still holds up, that I think is still really good, is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This one has autism representation and its own voices. This is the romance between Stella and Michael. So Stella isn't very experienced in the physical department and she wants to learn more. So she actually hires Michael to help her, who is a male escort and there is some like fake dating that goes in here as well and through the fake dating they like fall for each other when michael realizes this though like when she hires him he's like okay no let's start like all the way at square one like let me teach you how to like hold hands with someone and date someone and all this jazz so um yeah it's like a slower burn i want to say and i did love this representation it's great so is uh, the Bride Test, which is book number two. I haven't read book number three just because I know that one doesn't really lean more on the romance side, but I still think this one is like fantastic. It's great. It's like one of my favorite fake dating romances. And I don't love the fake dating trope, so. Another older one is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. I actually love quite a few of Christina Lauren's older backlist. By the way, if you didn't know, Christina Lauren is an author duo. So you have Christina and you have Lauren. So their books used to be like raunchy as hell. Okay, so I have a few of their beautiful bastard books. Those ones were raunchy as hell. Like they were like catnip to me. I read like all of them and I was obsessed because they were hot. Like beautiful bastard, stinking hot. That one's so hot. I think I'm learning something about myself. I think I love romance scenes that like in like public setting situations because those happen in like all those books. <laughs> but I think after this one was when they started going more towards the women's fiction slash closed door side. I don't know why they decided to go that way, maybe to cater more to more people than just us hot reading romance girlies, I guess. It seems to be going for them. They're on like a lot of like bestseller lists, so good for them. Um, but I prefer their like, their, their, their scenes, okay? Like I prefer, like I prefer when they wrote their scenes in their books, like those scenes in their books because they're, they're really good. Like they were really good. So this one has a little bit of spice in it. It's not too much, but it's not closed door. But I remember absolutely loving this one and loving Hazel the heroine. So this is 
Josh and Hazel. Okay, she reminds me of Jess from New Girl. <laughs> if Jess had like a billion pets. These two characters actually met in college and Hazel had a little bit of a crush on Josh, but they were never like friends, friendly or whatever, but they bump into each other years later and um, they become like actual friends and they decide to help each other find their person. They set each other up on dates. However, they have realized at the end of every date, they don't find each other like hanging out with their dates. They end up finding themselves hanging out with each other, like watching a movie or getting drinks or something like that. Like not going on a date, but like hanging out with each other at least. They've like realized like, oh, like we're spending more time together than the people we're supposed to be getting to know. Anyway, it's a great friends to lovers book. I love it a lot. It's like one of my favorite, like older friends to lovers books. I have to mention Heartless by Elsie Silver. Okay, I feel like this one is worth the hype. I know some of my friends actually don't like this book granted okay everyone has their own like reading taste and stuff like that i personally love this because it ticks like all my boxes i love a single dad nanny like forbidden romance with forced proximity like tick 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 all my boxes this is the romance between kate and willa they actually end up meeting at a coffee shop at the beginning of this book willa is standing in line in front of kate and her purse spills and outfall her panties okay her underwear it was a clean pair at least but um kate like helps her clean up her stuff, like put it back in her purse. And he is like, oh my gosh, this is underwear and tries to hand it back to her. She goes, you know what? Finders keepers. So Willa is kind of like a free soul, flies by the seat of her pants. <laughs> Kate actually was really interested in Willa at that moment. But then a few hours later, guess who shows up for his like nanny interview for his young son, but Willa. And he's like, oh my gosh, I cannot be attracted to the nanny. He's like a gruff, grumpy cowboy rancher dude. It's actually so fun. I love both of these characters. They're really good. I always have to talk about Ice Planet Barbarians. I feel like it is hyped up and I think it's worth it. Okay, I know a lot of people are like, blue aliens, that's so weird. Yeah, I thought that too, okay? A lot of people thought that too. A lot of people thought that before they picked this up and you were proven right but also wrong because it is weird it is weird okay but it's also really good and really addictive i know people who like weren't really interested in these read book number one and marathoned all 22 books so just saying they're so fun women from earth humans from earth end up getting kidnapped by evil aliens their spaceship crash lands on this ice planet and there are only a few human women survivors and Georgie is kind of like the leader of the group and she goes off into the snow to go find water or food or something because these women are dying. There is a big blue alien dude with a tail and horns who saves her life and she wakes up to him eating something. Okay. <laughs> So there's Spade and Mates involved and it's just a great start to a great series. I have so much fun with these. Like they, y'all know, y'all know. I love me a Ruby book and these books I reread all the, all the time. They're such comfort reads. Next I have Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. This is the first book in her Brutal Birthright series. Sophie Lark has really gotten popular these past few years. I think the hype is totally worth it with her books. I really love them. They're great books that you can read to get into mafia romance for sure. This is the first book in one of her mafia romance series and it is the arranged marriage romance between Ada and Callum. They're from rivaling mafia families. There's an age gap there. They're forced to get married and they don't like each other. But uh, one of the most iconic scenes that I remember is she finds out that he's allergic to strawberries. And so she eats a bunch of strawberries before the wedding. And so when they kiss, he goes into like anaphylactic shock on the wedding day. Like that's the kind of enemies to lovers. Like this is an enemies to lovers book. You know, you have hate to love. This one's enemies to lovers. They are enemies. So I feel like this one is worth the hype. These were so addictive for sure. I do need to read the spinoff. I haven't read the spinoff yet, but these ones, addictive. And the last one that I have is Funny Feelings by Tara DeWitt. This one is so cute. Don't get me wrong, cute but hot, okay? Cute but hot, it has its hot moments. Farley and Meyer are our two main characters. There's a little bit of an age gap. There's an age gap between the two. Meyer is a single dad and he used to be a comedian, but when he became a father, like his priorities shifted. And now he coaches Farley, who is a female comedian and they're best friends. They do everything together and she loves his kid so much. But then there becomes a situation where they have to fake date each other and the rest goes from there. But I think this one is worth the hype. I love me a single dad romance. So I really enjoy this one. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some romances that I think are worth the hype. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, but if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a microphone emoji in the comment section down below because funny feelings have a microphone on it. So anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.